of you today, um, such a wonderful group of people. Um, thank you, uh, Nelia, for, for the presentation and the introduction. Um, I think one of the things that we talk a lot about in the School of Arts is the intersections between art and science a lot. Um, and it's a very interesting location. Um, and often it's about translation and perception and um, understanding from a scientific perspective what happens in the artistic process or creative process and understanding from the creative perspective what happens in the scientific process. And definitely those conversations have to go both ways in order for them to be valuable um, and, and well considered. So I'm Dr. Tegan Bristow and I am at the Wood School of Arts in the Digital Arts Department. Um, actually, I see our previous head of school is here, uh, Brett Piper. Welcome, Brett. <laughs> nice to have you in the audience. Um, I'm also a principal researcher and also the former director of the Fagugesi African Digital Innovation Festival. And as, and, um, as we said, the NSTF South Special Annual Award theme winner for last year, which is on the creative economy for sustainable development. Um, so today I'm going to share with you three primary things. Um, one of them is an overview of Fagugesi African Digital Innovation Festival, which is the work uh, with which we, we won the award um, and kind of look at what it does and how it does it. Um, and I think it's I think it's really worth the award. So I'm really, really pleased that we were able to get the award for the festival. It's done a lot of work over the last few years. Um, and I think you'll also be inspired by the work that we've done. Um, the next one is just exploring the intersections of the creative industries and 4IR. Um, and this is really just in response to the themes that uh, this session is dealing with over the next two days, which is very 4IR heavy. And I'll be speaking to a response that was made with uh, um, volunteers within the uh, cultural and creative industries um, to the Presidential um, Commission on 4IR. Um, and, a and sort of unpacking that from the creative industries perspective. And then as a kind of closing, I'll just give you a sneak peek of the current research that we're doing at the School of Arts, where creative industries um, and technology meet. All right, so to start, I'm going to show a video, and I hope it runs well for everybody, um, of uh, Fagu Yezi. Um, this is a 2019 kind of overview video, which gives a really good view of what Fagugesi is and what our kind of objectives are with it. Um, let's see if I, let's hope it works. Let me know. Let's run to the screen. Okay. It's inevitable to be third world when your name has been extracted from your tongue and its gravitas unearthed from your mind. With fragments in our hands, attempted recreating beauties lost to the sleeping moon, Africa. You are the essence of innovation and origin of civilization. How have you forgotten the root of all life? So the Fakugesi Festival is all about digital art, digital innovation, um, looking at really cool projects and displaying them and showcasing all of the talent that South Africa and other African countries have to offer. It's a meeting place for content creators, technologists, VR enthusiasts. Fakugesi is the springboard of revival in Africa. I feel like this is a good place to come and meet people, network, see amazing work, be inspired, plot and scheme, and also learn basic technical things from people that know a bit better. <laughs> Force as a festival slogan was really pertinent to us because we're doing a project about space and how people claim space in neighborhoods through technology. So to own your force, I think for us was also to look critically at that technology. Africa. The first human words were spoken by you. You cradled mathematics, rocked navigation, pressed paper from papyrus reed, burped pyramids. We're visionaries before we were accredited, so we exhale the future. So what I created was a research booth on vaporwave. It's very nostalgic, very glitchy art. So oh, what I did for festival is to present an ecology of sounds, memories, and rocks. To tell the story about rocks as proxies of territories floating in space, but they, they belong together. 
One of our initiatives is called Giving Poetry Wings. I got poets and digital artists to come together to create artworks that relate to poetry but have an augmented reality feature. Africa. Exponential innovation and thinking for you it was not a program incubated in a hub. It was your communal daily bread. Imagination, the language with which we spoke to each other. Fear irrelevance brewed by old knowledge. Fall in love with the future you have not kissed. What has really inspired me throughout the conference is the fact that people have started looking at the creatives, art, and tech as a business. Because as much as we want to work in our own small silos, one day those silos need to grow out. So this anime marathon that we're running now during Fagogesi is looking at inner city kids and how we can give them exposure to the animation industry. Today we're doing a cross-sex again jam. The aim is to allow people who are involved in different sexes like music and arts and animation and programming to get together and make a game together and come up with something that's really cool. Johannesburg is at the heart of the continent, brimming with potential, youthfulness, so therefore, this festival, I would guess, opens up opportunities for that interdisciplinary, inter-institutional collaboration. I think uh, WhatsApp groups and the way they configure and reconfigure neighborhoods as places that some people belong and some people don't is really important. This is a very emerging, intimate surveillance culture and we need to be watching out for it. So we are working with students from University of Johannesburg, Industrial Design, to learn about how you could use wearable technology as a tool to go out to map different things about the city. This festival is so wonderful because it's important to play with process. And that's what I thought this market is going to be the perfect place to play with process. is a British Council residency scheme that is an open call for artists and storytellers between 18 and 35 across Africa and in the UK. People are selected from each region and come together and create a hopefully amazing work in collaboration with one another. Lab now now is forcing me to interact with people and to see how their knowledge and their skills can contribute to my work and how I can also help in that exchange. Fafigese is starting to attract really interesting partners where it can start being a marketplace where people can connect, especially in terms of owning what we have as Africans and selling it and trading it in a way that's meaningful to us. I think Fafigese is playing a huge and important role in being the renaissance of change in Africa. Africa. Set your own table before the world. Deck it with your own systems. Feast on your force to drape descendants with a power. Not all that is foreign is greater than your own. Hold your force, own your ish. Okay, um, I hope you all. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed um, enjoyed that video, and it's quite a long one, but I think what it does is give a really, really good indication of what Fakugezi is and the vision that we had for Fakugezi, which is very much about bringing culture and specifically African culture forward in the sort of digital creative sector. Um, so previously, um, you know, we were thinking about creativity from the perspective of painting and drawing and theatre and music and poetry. Um, the Fagugesi Festival specifically focuses on digital uh, creativity. Um, we dominate, dominantly look at animation, gaming, immersive media, but we look at the intersections of creativity and uh, technology too. So the poem that you heard in the background um, is the beautiful poem that we actually commissioned um, uh, a poet 
poetess <laughs> called Miss Emma um, to be the poetess of the festival. And that is the poem that she wrote in response to our theme that year, which was Own Your Force. And the reason we made the theme Own Your Force is because the critical questions that we were asking in that year was how do we own what we put out from a content perspective into the world? Um, so, you know, what are the copyright issues that we might have? How do we contract um, as creators within the digital space? So before I carry on, I just wanted to kind of give an overview of what Fagugesi Festival achieved um, over the years um, that we've been running it. And I think one of the most important things, and obviously it's a lot more than what you see here, but uh, as four points, one of the most important things was a partnership. And that is a partnership between the School of Arts um, and the Tsumolohong Innovation Precinct. So the Tsumolohong Innovation Precinct is a kind of subsidiary of Wits, in, Wits University, but is a public facing innovation precinct. And it was really exciting for us to link the creative industries with the research and learning aspects of academia. And we continue to try and do that. You know, it gave us a, an opportunity to both, um, you know, and our second point here, be, create visibility for the digital creative sector, which not a lot of people knew about in 2014. If you said digital art to someone in 2014, they'd be like, what, why? <laughs> um, but it also allowed us at the same time to have a critical engagement. And I think the link between research and learning and the industry is that critical engagement. How do we ask difficult questions about things like ownership and African culture within the technology space. And this is what Fagugezi allowed us to do. One of our other things was industry support. So we were able to support young digital creatives um, and an industry ecosystem over the years and really grow a vision for what that can be. Um, I mean, we did this across many, many activities from residencies to hackathons to workshops and conferences. Um, but we really saw a lot of young people growing in that space and we we're very, very proud to have seen that. And then the last thing is in marketplace and as I sort of hand over the festival um, uh, from kind of its founding, very uh, development focused orientation um, back to the Tsumolokong precinct who are now taking it on uh, completely operationally. Um, we really are thinking about the festival as a marketplace because it's become that. All eyes are on Fagugezi Festival. When you wanna know about digital creativity in Africa, you look towards Fagugezi. So we're excited about the prospects of that and also going online uh, with that marketplace internationally. Um, so if you want to know more about Fagugezi, um, you can go to the website, which is www.fagugezi.co.za. Um, and there, what you'll find is actually this, this is the cover of an alumni um, catalog that we created last year in kind of celebration of the first five years of the festival. Um, last year was our sixth year. Um, you can see the posters at the bottom there. Um, we kind of engage different themes throughout, but also in highlighting some of the most amazing digital creatives from across the African continent that we've worked with um, and our partners. So it's got a really nice section on the partners, the people that have been there from the word go who supported the festival and its growth over the years. So please go and have a a look at that if you want to know more about Fungus. Um, so the next bit that I wanted to talk to, as I mentioned before, was the CCIs, which stands for the Cultural and Creative Industries, and 4IR in South Africa. So as I mentioned in my introduction, um, we a group of people from the cultural and creative industries led by Beth Arantha, who's um, head of the South African Cultural Industries Incubator, and Monica Newton, who is now uh, the head of the National Arts Festival, um, but used to work for, uh, for um, the creative industries in Gauteng province. Um, and a lot more people, <laughs> which I haven't listed here, um, amazing people who kind of got together to make a response. And the response was to the Presidential Commission on 4IR that was produced over from the beginning of 2019 across into 2020 and 2021. And Beth was part of this process in engaging, which was very much a kind of industry engagement, uh, university engagement, government engagement, bringing different leaders together to kind of look at 
what uh, for IR for the country needed to be. And then following that is sort of strategy development. And we had the opportunity to respond to the sort of initial strategic interventions that came out of the 4IR commission. And I wanted to speak to that a little bit today. I'm not gonna go into like extensive amounts of detail. Um, it's a re response that we developed um, uh, as a group. So I didn't develop it alone, just note that. Um, and it really kind of looked at the, the early strategic interventions and um, how the, the uh, CCIs, the cultural creative industries were represented in that. Um, so one of the main things that we found was that there was an issue in perception around 4IRs and the cultural and creative industries. So in the sort of initial strategic interventions, the CCIs were very broadly and not specifically included at all in the strategy. Um, so for instance, commerce, agriculture, all of these other spaces were very specifically included, but not the CCIs. Why? <laughs> Why was this? Because it was part of the sort of initial uh, consultation process. And we know that from talking to the group that there was very little understanding of how the cultural and creative industries actually engage with 4IR technologies, right? No one really knows what the technical needs are of the space and haven't had it laid out for them. And there are different reasons for why this hasn't happened um, and which I won't get into today, but we do know that they were very interested to learn and find out more and include the CCIs. So for instance, the CCIs were not understood as a beneficiary in the strategy because it was unclear how um, we would need uh, 4IR related infrastructure and resources or 4IR related commercial strategies or financing or 4IR or digital future proofing policy or legislature. Legislator, sorry. <laughs> well, um, so it was very important for us to basically bring that to the table in this response and say, this is where we are and this is what we need and this is how we're working in 4IR, in fact. Um, and part of that process actually was a little bit of a sort of fun exercise on our side to position um, the sort of history of the different revolutions. I mean, we're looking at a fourth industrial revolution, you know, where was the first, second and third, and how did the creative industries kind of on an international perspective actually engage these things. Um, and we unpacked that a little bit and I'm going to kind of give you an overview of that here just for interest more than anything else. Um, so the, uh, oh, I see some chats coming in. If there are, um, it, you might have to just highlight to me if you wanted to speak to me, but yeah, that's fine. Let me carry on. Um, so the, um, the, in the sort of first industrial revolution, you're looking at mechanization, you're looking at steam powered engines, but it was the initial shift towards an industrial revolution. And what a lot of people don't know is that the textile weaving industry, um, mostly in, in, in Europe and the United Kingdom, um, what contributed significantly to the development of the concept of automation. So there was this thing called the Jacquard loom, which basically led to early concepts of automation and also the punch card computing. So for those of you who are computer scientists who come from this, know that punch card computing was the beginning of computing as it is today. And that innovation was from the Jacquard loom, which was from textile weaving. Um, and so we wouldn't necessarily have computers today if people weren't weaving beautiful textiles. So it's important to think about the cultural and creative industries influence and impact across these different things. We often don't think about photography and chemical processes as being a, a sort of singular um, experimentation that went into all different directions, but the creative industries were very much involved in that too. In the next phase, we look at electricity uh, and communication processes and the development of film and time based audio and visual recording really was an evolution in which fundamentally changed how the world could be perceived and processed. We often don't think about how much visual and audio processing happens with us and very much within the fourth industrial revolution as well. And we don't really often think about that link from photography to film and audio um, as a creative encounter um, that had an influence in how we process and perceive the world. Um, and then from an information technology and the internet, um, you know, the graphical user in interface, um, the graphical input and output systems that we use on a daily basis are fundamentally part of how 
personal computing was evolved. Um, and we often don't think about sort of user experience design and interface design um, as principles in that that came from the cultural industries and the creative industries um, and played a major role in how we um, how sort of design is part of a kind of online media culture, essentially. So it's really important to see the fundamentals of, of the cultural industries within uh, a sort of deep understanding of the different um, areas. So, um, so today, when we look at the fourth industrial revolution, and which is very much data and software driven, um, we know that data and artificial intelligence, um, the sort of digital networks and cyber systems, are really, really important in terms of how we administer, produce, and monetize content, visual content, audio content, and all different kinds of content. Um, you know, think of audiovisual stuff, think of Netflix and video on demand, think of music streaming, think of digital design from web to architecture to the metaverse. All of these engage the cultural and creative industries somewhere. <laughs> I mean, different ways, which is we don't really have enough time to engage today, but somewhere. Um, and this continued trajectory is really important in terms of how we think about our human cultures and specifically our African human cultures, from language to diversity to creativity and how that might impact things like artificial intelligence, for instance, right? So developments from my sector currently include significant contributions in computer vision, um, haptic and body sensitive systems, and non-text-based processing, visual audio and language processing, um, additive manufacturing, 3D printing, and the future of screens and immersive interfaces um, in audiovisual media, so vir virtual reality, augmented and mixed reality environments. So we're very much embedded in these spaces and it's important to understand that these um, industries also require the same amount of critical engagement as well as technical engagement and resource development. Um, so one of the things about the, the strategic plan is that uh, the strategic interventions was that the document was mostly developed around uh, the pillars. So, and also probably why the creative industries weren't that well included in it. So the kind of four IR pillars were based on the technologies themselves. So there was an unpacking of the resources, the contributions, the needs around the different technologies. And one of the things that we did in our response was to respond to how the cultural and creative industries actually do engage the different technologies themselves because they were so central to the strategic plan as pillars. Um, so what I'm going to do is just kind of give you an overview of some of the things that we were talking about there. Not all of the technologies are listed here, but the main ones that uh, the cultural and creative industries engage, um, I list. So for instance, artificial intelligence. So we know that artificial intelligence is a data eating machine. It's like a monster. <laughs> In order to become intelligent, it needs a lot of information like a child. Um, and one of the things that's happening is that the world is scraping information out of, uh, out, of, uh, out of the world. And things like data sovereignty and our ability to hold our own data and um, monetize it or choose who and how it's used is really, really important. So these are some things that need to be fundamental, fundamentally part of kind of policy development in South Africa, which goes you know, as close to the ground as, as copyright. Um, we also think about data diversity in AI. And we know that Africa is one of the most diverse spaces in the world and we are full of diverse data and the AIs are hungry for this diverse data. How do we protect that and how do we control what happens with it? Um, rather yeah, than over. Um, we also think a lot quick. about hello. I like it. Hi, yeah. Preach to yourself. Hi Heather. Please, what is he preaching about? Yourself. <laughs> Apology. No, that's okay. Apologies. Right, I'll carry on. Um, so yeah, just looking at AI and the kind of 
complexity and how important it is for cu that culture engages in the AI spaces. And that is not just from a technical perspective. So not just in terms of automation and production distribution and administration of our content and the creative um, things that we produce. Um, 3D printing and additive manufacture is significant to heritage preservation. Um, how do we use 3D scanning and 3D printing to preserve our heritage in different ways in a data, um, in a data foundation, essentially. Uh, we often think about 3D printing in terms of products design, like small little boxes and product design, but actually 3D printing goes all the way over to architectural design and structural design. So what then do we need to do to think about rapid um, additive manufacturing um, that is content responsive, so responsive, context responsive, sorry, so responsive to our environments, to our people, to how we live, rather than responding to other spaces. And then the sort of general rapid and sustainable manufacturing of that stuff. Um, and we move along, so VR and AR immersion, so, you know, VR and AR is basically like huge resolution work. Um, it's fully immersive and huge in resolutions. The cultural and creative industries in South Africa are one of the few places that can manage that level of resolution um, for, for, for audiovisual content. Uh, we have high processing capabilities. We also look at content uh, distribution there. And this really needs additional support and engagement. Um, cloud computing, you know, if we think about uh, streaming media and video on demand, cloud computing is significant and fundamental to audience access. How do our audiences access the content that we make? Um, you know, we, these are content-led industries that are that are held within the cloud space. Um, how do we deal with new digital distribution models that are held within the in the cloud space? Um, how do we engage management and digital trade um, within the cloud space? And then blockchain, so digital asset management is fundamental within the blockchain space. Smart contracting, uh, digital distribution, crypto-led monetization and financing, and of course, NFTs, which are like the big thing. But all of these touch on some of the core pillars of the 4IRs, and the creative and cultural industries are really significant players in that. And it is important for us to lay that out and show the technologies that we engage with and the kinds of resources that we need uh, for development. So this is one of the things that we try to do in this response. So kind of going forward, um, we knew that some of the policy agendas that are related to 4IR um, really presented interesting opportunity to do very specific things at the moment in our country, which is to which can be a driver of innovation and digital adaptation, um, can be a source of new value creation, which is really significant at this time where we're basically living in a digital um, digital uh, economy and a contributor to human capital needs of the economy. So, for instance. One of the things that was really crucial to the group um, that put together the response was the value of kind of um, emotional intelligence and creative intelligence and innovative thinking that comes from creative engagements. Um, you know, you've often heard the difference between STEM versus STEAM. Um, so including arts as part of the science, technology, engineering and maths engagement um, in terms of education and also development. Um, so um one of the oh wait ah, sorry so we i have so that was a mistake there so i have challenges and interventions so some of the things that we highlighted were some of the challenges and some of the interventions um so the sector does not have a strong digital and future proof uh, policy orientation uh, for financing or also institutional frameworks the sector has significantly underdeveloped underdeveloped infrastructure resources and limited access to consistent digital education and training and a non-responsive rights and policy and legislation um, review process. So we're kind of stuck. We I see the value. We at the urge of at the verge of kind of developing out here, but are kind of stuck by some of the resource and policy development um, questions. So current interventions are kind of quite scattered digital hubs and innovation centers and fab labs. And most of them are in urban centers, but they don't have a strong engagement with the cultural and creative industries. Um, a kind of limited digital arts um, education in higher, higher education and training spaces, specifically those that look at the future of work and the future of the industry ecosystem. Um, 
there is an uptake of digital work, which is really exciting. I mean, I think one of the things that the, the um, pandemic did bring us is going online and understanding the value of creativity within that space. Um, and we're also seeing, however, a kind of limited intervention at schools to promote creativity and critical thinking, um, which really needs to, to be built out further. Um, so I think, um, I mean, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because it's really just a kind of introduction to the space and some of the questions that we had. Um, I could spend a long time talking about it. Um, but, you know, one of the things that the CCIs really want to advocate for is an attention to uh, attention to research on and development for the creative industries within the four IR pillars and inclusion of social sciences and creative sector within the expertise of the four IR strategy um, and agile governance and, and anticipatory policy and regulation that responds to the gaps that we're seeing and a shifting orientation of existing innovation spend um, in private sector and government towards the creative industries as well. Um, and then designing and testing better social, economic and cultural measurement tools to establish the full impact of innovation and entrepreneurship activities um, that would also include the creative and cultural industries. So that's kind of where we are and that was our response and it was taken very, very well. Um, and we feel confident that, that the work that we um, put into this will be will be responded to and we kind of look forward to, to future work um, in this space. So, um, sorry, that was a mistake there. As a kind of mechanism to wrap up, because I don't want to bore you all, and I'm sure you have lots of questions and lots of things to say, um, I just quickly wanted to end with some of the research that we're doing out of the Wits Digital Arts Department at the School of Arts. Um, and one of them is a, a, a collaboration between the School of Arts and Fakavizi Festival, which specifically looks at an interregional focus to understand and develop intermediary roles in the digital creative sector. So this is often a place that's overlooked. So intermediaries are publishers, distributors, talent and content aggregators, festivals, expos, um, and industry and advocacy bodies, and how important they are to take things digital and bring them into the kind of content space. Um, the other project that I'm engaging is with the School of Arts, Google Arts and Culture, and the Wits Computer Science Department, where we are looking at artificial intelligence and art in Africa specifically. And it's a supported residency with Google that basically will build out a series of proposals with artists on the continent um, to engage AI. So specifically looking at natural language processing and heritage proposals, because there's very little understanding actually of what it takes for a creative and cultural practitioner to engage AI technologies and concepts. So it's very much an exploration of that, but also creating new work. And then in my personal research, which I won't go into much detail at all, is that I look at something called vernacular algorithms, um, which is kind of engaging ethnomathematics and vernacular design principles as an algorithmic uh, philosophy. And I will leave it there. I've said a lot <laughs> and I'll open it up for questions. Um, this is how you can contact me directly through my bits email or through the School of Arts. Um, and I'll leave it there.